Hello, it's Ruth with Olive Gray Avenue. I am starting to work on a coffee table for our back porch. So we've done the pergola, we've done like the, the back paver patio, the brick paper patio. We've done so much work out there, the fire pit. And now it's coming down to like the details, like all the big stuff is done which is so exciting. Oh crap. Okay, well, we have some raised garden beds to redo because the wood ones are falling apart. I just remembered. Okay, so there's one more thing. But anyways, we're getting down to the details of what's going to make this just finish off the space. I'm stoked. So these are actually scrap pieces from the pergola project. We had big like 12 foot um, six by six posts. And these are what we cut off to make them exact. We couldn't get them any closer. So, um, these are all scrap pieces. So I was thinking like, use them. I can use them. Like I can use all of these scrap pieces to make a whole new thing. And so one, it makes me feel really good to not be wasteful of this. These are really beautiful pieces of wood and I hate like them just sitting here with no purpose. Um, so this also gives me a chance to make this table, the, the idea I have, I'm gonna make the, I've been planning on making a dining table for outdoors. I love the idea, but it's gonna be huge. So I think this is a good opportunity to kind of like test it out, make sure it works. And then whatever maybe mistakes I make, we can fix for the dining table with this. So I'm gonna start by cutting these all the same size. I'm going to be um, sanding them. I think I'm gonna finish them with the water finish, like the slats, cause I'd really like to see this wood. Um, the posts on the pergola are painted black, so you can't really appreciate the beauty. Okay, so we're gonna get started with finishing the legs. All right, let's get started. Don't forget to subscribe, like. I see all y'all watching and thank you so much. Uh, I also see that like 98% of you are not subscribed. So hit that subscribe button, like button, and we're gonna get started. I want to see the coolest thing ever. The coolest I the coolest thing I think is in our garage at the moment because it's kind of new. Yeah. That's an extension cord from the ceiling. Oh, yeah. Alright, so we're gonna get this all hooked up. Ooh. Well, I guess I should get my mask on. I wasn't trying to sand these smooth, just get the little fuzzies off from it being rough hewn. And I measured and cut these all down to the same length. This is the idea. All of these are scraps from the pergola. This is about 19 inches. I was planning on doing a two foot top. So that works out a, a little over two inches on either side for overhang. So I think that's good. And then this is kind of at 36 right now. That's kind of what I thought I would do. 36 by 24 made a decision <laughs> so i was gonna build the top with some overhang on it like two inches on either side but after getting this piece of like it's like whiteboard melamine stuff um and i put it up to the edge here i really like this like sleek no overhang look where it just butts straight up to it instead of 
you know, going like that. I think what I'm gonna do is build it so that it's just the right size to fit right on top of the legs. The length is good. The width, I'm gonna make a little bit smaller. We have to make our, our walls anyways. So this will work here. And let's see what that is. I need to see some more. Oh wow, it's almost perfect. Okay, so we're gonna do a 19 inch top. That's like a 19 and a quarter. I put two inch strips of melamine on the inside of the frame so that everything the concrete touches is the smooth melamine. When I made the last concrete countertop, one of the mistakes I made was not using 100% silicone. So I'm not sure what it was, but it wasn't 100%. And so that made it really hard to get off the edges. It just like stuck on there. So I got this this time and I'm hoping it'll work perfectly because last time it was a bunch of caulk left on the edges and I had to like scrape it off. After I applied the bead of silicone, I wiped it really, really smooth with a baby wipe. Get the form built for the top of the concrete table. While that's drying, the silicone has to dry around the edges. And while it's drying, I'm going to seal all of the wood that we're gonna use for the base. And I'm gonna be using the same thing I used on the pergola, which is the Thompson's water seal. don't start leaking. We're using this rapid set mortar mix and rapid set flow control. Now we have, oh gosh, three quarts of water. For safety. Oh, my back. Oh, oh gosh. So heavy. This is just pure panic. <laughs> While we watch concrete dry, Let's talk about it. I wanted to do this small version first for the coffee table because we're gonna be making a mama table, a big dining table. So it'll be, I don't know, four times the size. Maybe not quite, but like three times the size. And it's been a minute since we did it. Working with concrete is always stressful for me. <laughs> Every time we work with concrete, we're like, okay, never again. Here we are things I did wrong. Uh, make sure to have all your supplies <laughs> before you start. I thought I did, but I didn't have the little spatula thing. That's not what it's called, but the spatula to smooth this didn't have that. So I had to run and get that. I also forgot that like a hack to helping this come out of the mold easier is to spray it all with oil, like canola oil or whatever. Put something that's like a lubricant like that. It'd be way easier with two people. I felt sheer panic <laughs> the whole time I was doing this because I was doing it by myself and it had to all be like really fast. Number four is to have an extra battery charging. You're gonna sit with me. Okay, 
come sit with me in your PJs. What number was I on? I think I was on number four. Oh, have another battery charging because this one I had to mix up two bags and the first bag I used an entire charge, which makes me think that the big mama table, if we do more bags in that, we're gonna need more charges. <laughs> Can you not touch it, please? Okay, very gently. Ah! <laughs> Flow control for the reverse one, it makes it super liquidy like water. This one, I put it in, I couldn't tell a difference. I don't know, it was like magic the first time and I didn't see really any difference this time. But it does add strength, so it's not like a waste, but I don't know, that's not what I bought it for. I bought it for the ease of like pouring it in here. But when I put this in here, it was like normal concrete. Well, let's keep waiting. It's still warm. Oh my gosh. Uh, that's not a good idea. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> This is glued and brad nailed to the main portion in the bottom. This is only attached to the sides, not to the bottom. What uh, what kind of glue did you use? Construction of glue. What do you think I should do? Normally you would just tap it off. But you brad nailed it from the bottom, understandable. And you put construction adhesive on there, which is the strongest adhesive we use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To to, to put things together, so I'm, I don't want it going anywhere. I'm a little at a loss. I think you can do this <laughs> a lot easier than I can. I tried to do this baby for that hammer. Okay. So you were just hitting this? Wow, wow. Mistakes were made. Let's just say that. Mistakes were made. But like this part right here, it moves like butter. Tight. Just this big, all of that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, I'm sorry I was unavailable today for you. Mm -hmm. It's all your fault. <laughs> Since the flow control didn't work, the first batch I did um, dried really quickly and I didn't have a chance to vibrate it down. So there's a bunch of air bubbles and then you can clearly see the two layers. But the whole point of the flow control is that it's liquidy and it's like water and so you don't like see two different layers. What I'm gonna try to do to fix this is just mix up a little bit of extra of uh, the mortar mix, maybe like a cup and then just like manually fill this in. So let's see if that works. This worked really well to fill those holes, although using the trowel was a little bit more difficult. I ended up just using my hands, and even though it does fill those cracks, it isn't going to be the same texture because this concrete was extremely smooth where it touched the melamine where it was drying, but it does fill the cracks, so it looks better. And I'm okay with concrete being worn and being imperfect because that's kind of the whole vibe. And just like that, she's done. Make sure to stick around for the next video where we build a big outdoor dining table very similar to this. So make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell for when it drops. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. What you want? <laughs> it's going to show you my coffee. Show me coffee. I made, this is the rest of the moon look. Yeah, it fit exactly to make one cappuccino. Oh, my moon milk. That's delicious. Oh, I thanks. I put the salted butter thing on there.
and I heat it up in the wow. milk. And then I whisk it to You're try to You're using make it all of my good coffee stuff? It's my good coffee stuff. You suck. <laughs> Get out of here. Interrupting my video with your delicious coffee. about something. Maybe it was important. <laughs>